Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our devotion and to the season of Lent. Before we read our scripture for today, I want to share with you a text message between a husband and wife that I recently read. Husband sends his wife the following text message. You are negative. Wife responds. And you are stubborn, arrogant, a low life care about no one but yourself and your friend. All you are interested in is your own self all your life, not fulfilled even one of your promises. It is only I who is putting up with such miser and insensitive men. You good for nothing fat ugly men. Even your hair transplant failed. Husband responded. I was just informing you that your COVID test is negative. Wife. Oops. Sorry. Our theme for today is power of words. And we will find our scripture from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 12, verse 36 and 37, reading from NIV Bible. But I tell you that everyone will have to give account on the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. For by your words, you will be acquitted, and by your words, you will be condemned. Reading same scripture from MSG Bible. Let me tell you something. Every one of these careless words is going to come back to haunt you. There will be a time of reckoning. Words are powerful. Take them seriously. Words can be your salvation. Words can also be your damnation. I think you would agree. These are pretty strong verses. Jesus warns us that words are powerful. We need to take them seriously. That's why King David said these words in Psalm 141 verse 3. Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. It was a good prayer for David. And it's still a good prayer for us. Because our hearts and our lips are connected. Our true inside self is expressed through our mouth. Columnist Michael Curran from New Beginning Baptist Church gave us a background for the message saying, in order to understand Jesus' meaning when he spoke the words of our text, it is necessary to remember the context of his words. It was the Sabbath and Jesus in the company of his disciples was walking through a grain field Passing through the field, the disciples plucked some of the grain because they were hungry. Some Pharisees saw what they were doing and complained to the master. Secondly, Jesus healed a man with a withered hand in the synagogue. And what he did next was calculated to drive them mad with rage. Again, when a demon-oppressed man was brought to him, he healed him in Matthew 12, verse 22. The people began to wonder aloud whether he could indeed be the promised Messiah, but the Pharisees responded by speaking ill of him. Jesus' response was to caution them against becoming so hardened in their hearts that they were eternally disqualified from the grace of God. He cautioned them against committing what we have come to identify as the unpardonable sin. Jesus continued by saying, Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for the tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak, for by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Matthew 12, verse 33 to 36. The Pharisees had ascribed the deliverance of a demon-oppressed man to the power of Satan. Jesus pointed out that a rotten tree cannot produce good fruit. If they are calling the tree rotten, 
then they are confessing that the fruit it is rot is rotten as well. Likewise, if they are saying that the fruit is good, then the tree must likewise be good. Fruit and roots are intimately interconnected. In the same way, we cannot say that one has a good message, but that he has evil motives. Either the message is good and the motive is good, or the message is bad and the motive is equally bad. It is a caution for us to avoid making thoughtless accusation against others. Either their fruit, the words of their mouth, reflects the presence of Christ, or their fruit reflects that they are consumed by evil. In verse 33 and 34, it is evident that Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees. They had accused him of being in league with Satan. Their accusation at last elicits a response. Jesus clearly addressed the religious leaders, calling them a brood of vipers. However, in verse 36 and 37, Jesus addresses all people. When Jesus wants that by our words we will either be justified or condemned. He is speaking to all of us. He formally introduces these verses with an introductory formula, I tell you. This approximates the most formal introduction possible, I tell you the truth. It is a way of setting up a particular important saying, what is vital to our meditation this morning is the knowledge that what is said in is, is, is indicative of the state of the heart. God is holy and God is omniscient. Therefore, God knows who we are and he knows what we are. He will not excuse even the idle words that we have spoken. One great lesson we should draw from this text is that we must account for who we are. Jesus states this tr truth by saying that we must give account for every careless word spoken. Many sages attest that our speech reveals who we are, but Jesus intensifies the importance of watching our speech by stating that even our careless words are under divine scrutiny. When Jesus spoke the words recorded in our text, he was cautioning against permitting our words to be evil, accomplishing what is wicked and evil. He was warning that we must accept responsibility both for what we say and for the impact of our words. Words are vital and that they can be used as weapons. Trevor Hudson in his book, Pause for Lent, puts it this way, words carry much spiritual power. They wound and heal. They break down and build up. They discourage and encourage. Jesus places eternal value on them when he says, we will be judged by words we have spoken. We dare not underestimate the damage that harmful words cause. They can destroy confidence, tarnish reputations, spread rumors, split families, divide communities, and spark fights and wars. Every word we speak can be a brick to build with or a bulldozer to destroy. Words are, are seeds. They are containers for power. They carry creative or destructive power and they produce a good or bad harvest in our lives and in the lives of those we love. Jesus is reminding us that what we say reveals what is in our hearts. It's an indication of what your heart or our heart is really like. In contrast, helpful words of love and appreciation have the potential to bring blessing and life. They can make God's love real for those around us. During Lent and after, let us think careful, carefully about how we speak to others. Let us recenter our lives on what matters most, the one who made us and died for our, us all. Let us pray. Father God, heavenly mighty God, loving creator, 
creator of heaven and earth. This morning we give you praise, we give you honor. We say thank you, Holy Spirit, for who you are and for reminding us of the things that can bring condemnation into our lives. I ask you that you put a clip on our mouths so that we will not use our mouth to bring condemnation upon ourselves. We pray that, Lord, you help us to think well before we speak at all times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.